Um, we are going to look at some stuff that just came out, some new gear. Um, let's get right into the content. Um, first thing we're going to look at is the new Aperture MC. I'm super interested in it. I actually just released a video about this guy here, the uh, Wii Light S05, which is a pocket light that's smaller than the new Aperture MC Pro, um, but does about 90% of what it does that I've seen. Um, the videos we're going to be reacting to today, I haven't actually seen at all. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, you'll get my reactions, my thoughts on these things. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is the Aperture MC Pro. The second thing we'll look at is the new Rode Wireless ME. Um, it's a weird name, in my opinion, but um, that's what they chose to name it. So we're going to look at it, and we're, I'm going to share my opinions, my thoughts, um, what this gear is good for, uh, who some of who who this gear is good for, um, professionals or. Uh, people that are one-man bands, I don't know yet. So we're going to look at it. We're going to see what these things do, um, how they um, react in um, more of a film crew type of way, and um, share my thoughts on it. You can ask your questions. Make sure to post in the comments. Uh, give this video a like if you're here. Um, that makes it go up in the algorithm. really helps out a lot. Share this video with other people that you might think need this. Um, if you are, are a videographer or, or something like that, um, any photographers, videographers, let me know in the comments. Um, I'd love to connect with you and feel what you are doing. Uh, let me know what you're working on as well. So here we go. First things up, we're going to be looking at the uh, Aperture MC Pro. Oh, that's cool. Three, two, one. Action. Okay, so right off the bat, the first thing that I'm noticing is that they're really showing off the um, the app, the Aperture's app, the, um, what is it called, Citus Link, because you can connect everything in Citus Link and do all these cool chases and light fixture things and everything. I wouldn't be surprised if it's got... I wouldn't be surprised if it's got more professional wireless systems in there, too, where you can connect it with um, industry standard wireless rigs. So let's keep watching. In every project, with every vision, there's a moment when every DP looks at the frame and asks, how do I take this one step further? Quick decision making requires even quicker tools. And when we introduced the MC, we wanted filmmakers to have the freedom to illuminate anything upon desire with any color in the palm of your hand. Because even the smallest changes make the biggest impact. So I love I love how dramatic it is because everything that they've said so far, the Wii Light can do. Like every color in the palm of your hand, yeah, this this does that. Um, it does white really well, um, very color accurate. This, on the other hand, um, I've had uh, you know, this doesn't compare to the Aperture MC or MC Pro in the fact that this is very plasticky. But if that's not something that you're concerned about, the Wii Light SO5 so far is just as good. But this light is $35, and I think the Aperture MC Pro is $200. So I haven't seen anything that this can do that this can't do besides you know connecting it to Aperture's proprietary app, which is fantastic. We made some tweaks of our own. Introducing the newest mini champion, the MC Pro. More strength, more power, more control. Our newest mini LED powerhouse comes with everything you know and love about the MC. So just in that little flash, let me let me rewind it. Just I'm gonna rewind it right here. Our newest mini LED powerhouse comes with everything you know and love about the MC. Like full color control, a compact form factor, 
and easy mounting options, while adding more intensity and durability, boasting 1,585 lux at half. I went too far, but let's see. Let me go back a little bit. Just where was it? I saw a little flash control. right there. It was just like three frames, I think, but just the, these little magnetic strip things that it comes with, I've, you know, um, you used to have to buy those separately. The Aperture MC has magnets in the back of it, but um, you, it's cool that they're, it's cool that they're including some um, metal strips that you can just stick things to, because I've got this paper backdrop behind me. I could probably just stick it up behind the paper backdrop and put an aperture light up there. Or, you know, I could literally clip an aperture light to my shirt if I wanted to using one of those. Anyway, it makes it super easy to mount the light. Our newest mini LED powerhouse comes with everything you know and love about the MC. Like full color control, a compact form factor, and easy mounting options. While adding more intensity and durability. Boasting 1,000... More intensity is huge because the aperture uh, MC doesn't, isn't, doesn't get that bright. 185 lux at half a meter, the MC Pro clocks in at four times brighter than the original, while still maintaining two hours of battery life. Filmmakers can match any color temperature in any environment with an expanded CCT range of 2,000 Kelvin to 10,000 Kelvin. Green okay, 2,000 Kelvin to 10,000 Kelvin. This gets 2,800 Kelvin up to like 6,800 Kelvin. So it's got this one beat on that end. Magenta tunability and SSI scores of 72 in daylight and 82 in tungsten. And speaking of any environment, its IP65 dust and water resistant construction means that the MC Pro stands among the toughest in the industry, powering through the harshest climates, so you will always get your shot. But it wouldn't be made for the pros without one of its most highlighted features, wireless CRMX control. With its built-in Lumen Radio TMO2 chipset and wires DMX support, lighting technicians have the peace of mind, knowing that once it's set, the programmers can do the rest, with the precision to make anything possible. I'm moving pressure in the air ducts. I'm not sure what's happening down here, but the wire is being fried. Uh, yeah, so that wireless feature that they were talking about is the more professional wireless feature that um, a lot of pro lights have. So you can go to a studio and program these with a real uh, lighting board and still control them wirelessly. So that was huge because the Aperture MC doesn't have that and you can't plug in DMX. So if you don't know what DMX is, DMX is the uh, protocol for normal lighting where you can plug in a wire and control it professionally. But since the Aperture MC is so small, it's huge that they've put the wireless feature in there where you can control it with other professional wireless systems. We didn't just upgrade the speed of setup and control. We improved how you sculpt the light. Quickly snap on any of the included magnetic accessories, from the 30-degree light control grid to the diffusion dome. With a wide arsenal of modifiers and mounting solutions, like the integrated neodymium magnets, the MC Pro comes ready to battle. But why stop at one when you can have an army? The MC Pro comes available in an 8-light charging kit configuration that holds all the accessories and mounts you need including baby pin adapters and clamps with articulating arms, while allowing for quick charging via AC power or a DTAP battery. Just drop them into the case, and the wireless contact pin charging system will handle the rest. And when you're ready to shoot, set them all up in a group using Sidus Link and watch your backgrounds radiate with color. At Aperture, we're always setting the standard for speed on set, from the largest light in your kit to the smallest. And when you level up your production, we're right there with you because you deserve to operate with finesse. Ready to change anything at a moment's notice and feel relieved that it happened so quickly. That's what it means to have complete creative control. All right, well, that's the Aperture MC Pro. That's actually impressive. Um, what do you guys think? Let me see, I've got some comments. Let's see what's going on. Uh, love how you jump right in yeah for real like why don't people why don't more people just jump right in right whoa dj george chuck what's up chuck got crystal scratch watching this is great segment love more of these want you want more of these in the future i got you i got you just us films producing my first documentary series about black fatherhood. Man, I can't wait to see that coming out. I've got a documentary coming out too and I don't I can't tell you what it is just yet. Um 
but I'm excited to share it with you guys whenever that's happening. Um, but man, the uh, the Aperture MC Pro, it looks very pro. Like this is for, in, in my opinion, this is for people that are going out on film sets that um, are using these kind of lights in all sorts of like film crew environments. Make, they're making it super easy to like put on accessories, uh, use it in professional sets um, where you've got a lighting guy, a lighting tech, maybe even a lighting crew uh, that's going to be helping you out. Um, what you're paying for with the Aperture MC Pro is the, the usability, like how easy it is to mount, how easy it is to put on the grid and the uh, soft little front part of it. Um, and for the wireless features like um, Citus Link, and for the more, I don't, I don't know, is it even more professional? Because Citus Link is really good. Um, but the, the more industry standard wire, uh, wireless setup. Um, so if you're, you know, a, a lighting guy, a grip or something like that, and you're looking for a professional lighting kit that has, you know, a pocket light that's more professional, more set for, um, studio use and on in the field use for in larger productions then the aperture mc pro is for you but for somebody like me that's just going to use these for youtube videos mostly um i'm not going to necessarily rent a bunch of gear out um so i don't think the aperture mc pro would be for me this this little light right here is 35 dollars. the aperture mc is $99. You can get it for $75 sometimes. It might actually be $75, but the Aperture MC Pro by itself is $200 right now, and the 8 light kit that they were just talking about is like $1,800. While everything in there is super cool, while you, know, you can just plop the light down in there and it charges, if you're just running four of them, you can literally run four of them all day long uh, with the 8 light charging kit because I think you can charge them in less time than it takes to dissipate. They said a two hour running time for these lights and I think they charge in about 45 minutes from zero to 100%. So you could literally run the lights all day if you're not using all eight. Uh, you could probably use four or five of the lights all day long just continuously if you you know plan it out uh, properly and just have like three charging at all times but yeah what do you guys think let me know in the comments about what you think about the aperture mc uh pro is it something that you would get is it something that you need for your lighting kit let me know in the comments and uh let's go to the let's go to the next video let's see um let's stop sharing that and share something else let's see Be patient with me, guys. Um, let's see. Da -da. There we go. All right. Here we go. This is a video by Caleb Pike. And um, he's talking about the Rode, video, Rode, Rode Wireless ME. Ro is, or is it Rode Wireless Me? Not sure. But um, let's... Let's watch Caleb. Caleb's a great content creator. He's somebody I've been following for a long time. DSLR uh, video creator, I think. Video shooter. DSLR video shooter on YouTube. Y'all go give him a follow. Um, but not right now. Finish watching this video first. <laughs> and... Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter, and this is the new Rode Wireless ME Kit. In my opinion, this is the best wireless option if you're looking for the easiest way to capture audio wirelessly for video, interviews, and podcasts. And in this video, I'm going to talk about why the downgrades and upgrades may or may not be worth it compared to the Rode Wireless Go 2s, which I've used a ton and have been incredibly popular. But first, I want to disclose that Rode did send me this ME Kit for this review. They have no idea what I'm saying, however, and they're not sponsoring this video. That said, this video is supported by those of you who have purchased my camera guides, LUTs, and video gear. Check the link in the description to learn more, and thank you guys so much for the support. It really does help keep sponsors out of these videos. First, I want to kick things off by talking about what is exactly the same between these and the Rode Wireless Go 2. First, the shape and size. These are identical to the Rode Wireless Go 2 when it comes to the form factor. They all share the same microphone and have the same Series 4 2.4 gigahertz wireless transmission system. Oh, he just snuck, sneak peeked at something that's new. I don't know if y'all caught that. 
right here, the Rode Wireless Go 2 has a microphone on the on the transmitter, but not the receiver, but check that out. Both of these have it here, or unless this is the Go 2 and this is the ME, I can't be sure because they're, they look the same. All right. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're not. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Let's keep watching. And have the same Series 4 2.4 gigahertz wireless transmission system. They also have the same app control through the Rode Central and a new camera app we'll talk about later. The same connection options to cameras, phones, and computers via the included adapter cables. Pairing also doesn't change. In fact, you can pair these with each other. So if you want to mix and match MEs with Go 2s, you can do that. And that brings me to the differences between the ME and the Go 2. And the first is going to be the price. The ME starts at $150 while the Go 2 starts at $200. The ME's receiver loses the display and the two buttons on the bottom, but gains a microphone which can be used along with the transmitter's mic. So you could have the receiver receiver mounted on top of your camera. In fact, the microphone is facing backward so that you could be filming and recording yourself and have a transmitter on somebody else and record both of those microphones at the same time. Or you can just turn off the receiver and only use one or two transmitters. Nope. So I was right. The uh, transmitter and the receiver both have a microphone on them. It's really cool that they thought about putting it on the back of the transmitter. Or, I mean, on the, the back of the receiver so that you can talk to the camera as you're behind it. So the, the person holding the camera has a microphone pointed at them. That's it's nice. Good job, Rode. Other big difference is that the ME not only can accept two transmitters like the Rode Wireless Go 2, but it can also use the built-in microphone for a third audio source. Another difference is going to be range. The Rode Wireless Go is stated to be able to go up to 200 meters with line of sight. The ME is stated to be over 100 meters. I did a test myself where I put both transmitters on myself, started walking away from the receiver, and I was able to go 39 yards before the ME started to cut out, and then up to 60 before the Wireless Go started to cut out. Now, line of sight is much better, but very few people are using these in fields where they're, you know, facing the transmitter and receiver. So I think this is a much better, you know, situation to be able to test. But if you're within arm's reach or even in the same room or building in some cases as the receiver, you should be okay. The front. Now, distance is a big topic when it comes to wireless microphones. And honestly, these small microphones are, are going to be kind of hit and miss when you're in buildings around people uh, and stuff like that. Uh, they, a lot of them claim to have like a 300 foot range and stuff like, you know, all these crazy ranges but when you get around people you lose line of sight uh, and the more things that you have in between you the more even cell phones that are in the room the more white radio frequencies are going to be filling the space and you're going to lose some of that ideal ideal um what do you call it the ideal situations for these wireless receivers so ideally you really don't want to be more than like 30 feet away. I have a set of uh, wireless microphones that I use and they get great range in an ideal situation. I've gotten 400 feet with them um, and been able to get a signal from the receiver to the transmitter. But anything that you put in between the camera, you break it up, just it goes really quick. And if you want to see that video, I actually did a, uh, a review of those microphones and I, I will post those down in the comments um, as soon as I am done here. So let's continue watching. Face of the ME units have a new shiny clear candy finish, which if you don't like can be hidden with a little gaff tape or masking tape and my go lock cage, which is fully compatible with the ME. I'll link the description if you want to pick one up for yourself. Of course, he's got to uh, plug in his his gear right there, which that is actually pretty decent gear. If if you've got a, any kind of Rode microphone system, this is uh I would recommend. And then we have a big one. The ME loses the ability to record internally, but it does gain two algorithmically controlled ways to adjust your audio levels automatically so they don't peak or clip. We're going to talk about this later because it's a huge feature and something that I really love about this. And trust me, it's not just a kind of newbie thing. It's great for professionals as well. The ME also loses the safety channel feature. So where you have one of your audio channels lower than the other so that you don't have peaking issues, gain assist kind of helps with that, but we'll get to that here in a second. And the ME receiver has three different... That's a big one for me because I'm... I'm I love having a safety channel, even if you've got, you know, peak limiting or whatever. I, I just like having a channel that I know is going to be good no matter what that's recorded, you know, 6 to 12 dB underneath my um, ideal gain. Because if somebody yells too loud for the gain limiter and it peaks one time, I like to be able to go to that safety channel and recover those lows, um, unless it's recorded in 32-bit 
float or something like that where I've got so much latitude. Uh, but output levels, whereas the Rode Wireless Go 2 can have a ton if you turn on the fine mode for the output level. A great new feature on the ME is the multicolored LED light. So at a glance, you can see where your battery level is, whereas that's always kind of tricky on the older Rode Wireless Go 2s. And finally, pairing is a little different. On the Rode Wireless Go 2, you can use the buttons on the receiver to pair different transmitters. Unfortunately, on the ME, you need to go to an app to pair things up. That said, you can pair Rode Wireless Go 2s with MEs, which is fantastic. That means they're both kind of interchangeable and compatible, and you can mix and match different combinations of transmitters and receivers. Okay, now let's dive deeper into the new features on the ME. And so far, you're probably thinking, why would I buy these? It sounds like I'm losing a ton of features, but really you're gaining a huge one, and that is gain assist. As an advanced video shooter, I really don't like the word automatic or auto when it comes to audio or really any video gear. I like to do everything manually, but gain assist really has... That's true. As uh, video shooters, we've been taught to go manual on everything. But when it comes to audio, a lot of us aren't pros. <laughs> just, let's just be honest with that. A lot of us are not pros when it comes to audio. So having something that's manual, that's um, automatic, as far as gain is totally like for me, especially when I don't have somebody that's watching it, um, that's their job. This is this is big. It's me changing my mind on that, depending on the shooting scenario that I'm in. So Gain Assist has three different settings. We have off, automatic, and dynamic. So first of all, off is just off, and these will act just like the go-to. You manually will adjust your audio level and control your audio levels in the camera. So you set your receiver to low, medium, or high, and you're good to go. Automatic, according to Rode, will give you a smoother, more consistent sound, which can be better in recording scenario, like an interview or audio levels, where audio levels are jumping around a lot. Finally, we have dynamic, and again, according to Rode, this will balance your audio, maintaining dynamics, resulting in more natural sound. This can be better in a more controlled recording environment, where sound Sound recording is more even. So I okay, so basically, auto would be like the high setting, and dynamic would be like a it's on, but we're not going to react as fast. That's that's how I see in it anyway. What do you guys think? I actually went and tested all of these different options, and I compared them to the Rode Wireless Go 2 because I have had in the past a lot of issues with this thing peaking, and it just seems like the signal is incredibly hot. And I feel like a lot of the time when I'm not monitoring these things and kind of rush to get my filming set up, I run into issues with the Rode Wireless Go 2. So I was really same. I don't have the road system, but I do have another wireless system. And it seems like if I'm not monitoring it, it jumps up and gets really hot really fast. I've had to go into my audio and try to fix hot mics like I would say 50 percent of the time. And it's probably partially my fault for not um, watching the audio as much as I should. But I mean, when you're a one man band run and gun, it's it's really hard to monitor sound, watch the camera, get the dynamic movement that you want and all of that stuff. So I'm curious to see if the ME solved those issues. And I was really impressed with the results. So we're going to listen to a test with the Rode Wireless Go 2's internal recording, which the ME cannot do. And traditionally, the internal recordings on these are so much better than the transmitted recording on your camera. That all goes away with the ME2 as you're about to hear. So let's go ahead and dive in. And then we'll also hear some loudness tests and see how the ME solves a lot of issues. Now for this test, I have the ME and the Rode Wireless Go 2. Now for this test, I have the ME and the Rode Wireless Go 2. Now for this test, I have the ME and the Rode Wireless Go 2. And we're going to compare the different settings between these two and see how good the automatic or gain assist is on the ME. So let's go ahead and start with the Rode Wireless Go 2. And I'm going to start way out here. And I'm going to bring it closer, 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 closer. It's right in front of my lips right now. So now I'm using the ME and we have it set to automatic. So let's go ahead and start that same test. I've got it at arm's length, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Now I'm going to bring it closer, 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 ME, 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 ME. And now I have it right by my lips here. So that was automatic. Now let's try dynamic. Now I have the ME set to dynamic. Let's go ahead and start the same test over again. Starting at arm's length, ME, 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 ME. And now we're right next to my lips again. It's right in front of my lips right now. And now we're right next to my lips again. It's right in front of my lips right now. So as you heard, the ME does a fantastic job of curbing those clipping issues. And I found that the dynamic sounded really, really good on this microphone. So make sure you test it for yourself if you buy one of these auto versus dynamic. But in my test, dynamic sounded really fantastic if you have the microphone semi close to you and you just don't have to worry about those clipping issues like you did on the Rode Wireless Go 2. That's that's a big one for me. Like if I'm choosing between a Rode Wireless Go 2 and a Rode Wireless ME right now, I'm actually leaning towards the Rode Wireless ME for the price and for the dynamic um, gain feature. Like that's huge. That's bigger to me than being able to pair two microphones to the camera at the same time. Well, I don't know. It might be on the same level. It's a it's a it's a close call right now. I also found that the ME sounded really nice, even though it was not recorded internally, whereas the Rode Go 2, when you are listening to the transmitted sound, just isn't very good. So you're looking at the same audio quality between the ME and the Rode Go 2, even though this one cannot record internally. And if you don't want to trust the ME, 
no internal recording. Did you hear that? No internal recording on the Rode Wireless ME. I don't know if that's a big deal to you. To me, I like to have um, dual, like anytime I can, I like to um, have some redundancy in my recording. So um, whenever I've got a microphone, I'll record to the camera and I'll record to a device. And if I've got a lav system, I like to have it record internally and record on the camera so that I've got that dual um, that dual thing. So in case um, my video file corrupts, I still have the audio. And in case my audio file corrupts, I've still got the video file um, with the record baked in audio. Yeah, baked in audio is what I was looking for, not recorded. But um, yeah, let's go. I mean, at all, you can, of course, turn gain assist off completely. But I think for most stuff outside of, you know, higher end things where I am able to monitor my own audio, I think these are going to be great for just run and gun, quick capture stuff. All right, now let's talk about the RX's microphone. So when you configure these things in the Rode Central app, you can turn on and off the receiver's microphone. And it has the same gain assist functionality as the transmitter. So you can set them both to dynamic or both off. And then you're able to have one recorded to the left channel and the other recorded to the right, split them up in post. Or you can connect a second transmitter to the ME receiver and record from both transmitters and the third receiver all at the same time. Now, if you do this, two of the microphones will be on one channel, so you won't be able to. Well, that's good. Um, so you can record two microphones at the same time. So the only thing you're really missing from the Rode Wireless Go 2 is the internal recording feature. So I don't know, with the dynamic gain and having the ability to record two microphones at the same time on different channels, left and right, stereo, to me, the wireless ME is winning at this point. Let me know what you think in the comments independently adjust their levels and posts, but still you can record up to three microphones at the same time, which you just can't do on the go-to. But there's even more you can do if you have an iPhone. You can actually use Rode's new capture app and plug the receiver into your phone via the included cable. Now you're able to record both microphones and have split screen interviews using your phone's camera. All of the settings for these things are built into that app. So very interesting new offering from Rode. You can check that out if you're an iPhone user. So probably something I won't use, but if you do a ton of interviews with your iPhone, this is kind of a no-brainer. All right, so so far I've been very positive about these, but there's definitely some things I don't like. The first one is going to be all of the features you lose. The safety channel, the option to record internally. There is no screen on these things. So unless you're using the app or you're monitoring your audio levels on the back of the camera with headphones, you just don't know what's really going on. Yes, we still have the buttons on the bottom of the units to do various things that you can control in the app, but it's just not as versatile as the Rode Wireless Go 2. And you're only saving 50 bucks, which, you know, that's still money, but the options you get with that extra $50, that's kind of a hard trade-off. So really it comes down to the gain assist, which luckily works super well and I'm really, really pleased with but I just miss a lot of those other features. And that brings me to what I want to see from Rode going forward. So this is a great step. So they're kind of giving us a lower level base option for the Rode Wireless Goes. And yes, you can pick these up to work with the Go 2. So that's really cool. But I would love to see them now expand the line even further. Maybe they could make something like a Rode Wireless Go Plus, which is a more professional version of the Rode Wireless Go. And maybe they'll give us gain assist as an option, but we'll still have a screen. Maybe we get locking TRS connectors, 32-bit flow internal recordings, an option to plug these into your computer and offload the files without app control in a way to control them without any app interface. It would be fantastic. So at the end of the day, if you just want to plug these into your camera and have great audio quality without fussing with levels and know you're pretty safe, these are a fantastic new tool. I think these are going to crush it in the kind of content creator, YouTube, vloggy, TikTok-y world because they're just so easy. They sound great and they're just easy to use. I also think these could be a great addition to those who already have a Rode Wireless Go 2 because they're interchangeable. If you want three microphones recorded at the same time, you can pick one of these kits up, connect multiple transmitters to the receiver with its microphone, or if you just want a transmitter that has the gain assist option, that's also a great way to go. But at the same time, if you monitor your own audio levels and you just want more options, of course, the Rode Wireless Go 2 kits are fantastic. I'm going to continue to use them because they're still my favorite small form factor audio solution for wireless use and i love that they still record internally so i have kind of a backup option if something goes haywire with my wireless connection so that's gonna wrap up my review of the rode wireless m if you want to learn more about it you can check out the information down in the description thank you guys so much for watching and for those of you who have purchased guides and things like the rode go lock thank you so much for the support and i really look forward to seeing you guys in our next video we have a lot of cool stuff planned so i'll see you then hope you have a great rest of your day take it easy all right yeah the rode wireless go too i have a lot of the same conclusions that caleb had actually um i think this is probably gonna be end up being We'll go. Nope. Don't want you playing. All right. Yeah, I've got a lot of the same conclusions that Caleb had. Um, so I think this is probably um, an intermediate between like the Rode Wireless Go 3 that might be coming out. Um, I'm just speculating here. So I, I don't have any insight onto anything Rode is doing. But 
if I were guessing, the Rode Wireless Go 3 is going to have all of the same features as the Rode Wireless ME, but it's going to be able to have 32-bit internal float so that you can get those higher gains, but still have the option of reducing the gain in post and not clipping and um, and, and recording internally. Um, those are the two things that are missing from the Rode Wireless ME. Um, if I'm buying a new set of Rode microphones right now, I'm really looking at the Rode Wireless ME um, because number one, it's 50 bucks cheaper for the set. And number two, that dynamic gain function is just like, as a, as a videographer, as somebody that's behind the camera most of the time, I just don't have time to continuously monitor audio whenever I've got, you know, a run and gun setup and I'm, you know, I've got the microphone on multiple people at the same time. I don't have time to have my earphones in all the time and listen to everybody and make sure that they're not peeking, go into the menu when I do hear something and turn it down and turn it up. Having a piece of gear that can do that automatically is, is clutch. That's, that's insane. Um, but losing internal recording, that's, that's a game changer too. So, you know, if you need the internal recording, then definitely go with the Rode Wireless Go 2. There's just there's no other microphone that does everything that it does and does internal recording. There are some microphones out there. Like I've got the, um, what is it? Actually, it's right over here. Hold on. The Movo kit. This is. These little Movo microphones here i've got a video about this on my channel that i'll link in the comments as well but these are great little microphones but they don't do internal recording and that's the only thing it really doesn't do um it does it, it comes with these two mic it comes with these two microphones and a receiver and um it gets great range um does you know records to the camera in stereo so one microphone goes to the left one microphone goes to the right the only thing that it doesn't do that the rode wireless go 2 does is internal recording it also doesn't have like the rode app that makes it super easy to configure and all that kind of stuff but it's got all the configurations in the menu system uh, plus it comes with this cool charging case so you can literally go all day with the with the microphones They do tend to be a little hot um, in my experience, and I'm not sure if that's just user error or not, because like I said, I don't have time all the time to monitor audio and adjust gain and all that stuff while I've got the camera in my hand. I don't know. I don't. There might be better people out there than I am. <laughs> Maybe that's just it. Maybe I'm just a bad um, one-man band. I don't know. But let's let's look at some comments here. So let's see. We had uh, Andrew saying that the new me will be good for that third source of audio. Oh, yeah, for sure. He has a Rode Go 2, and they've been magical. Having that backup would be nice in case something poops in the bed. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I always, anytime I'm out on a shoot, I have extra everything, extra lens, another camera body, another microphone just in case. Um, and so having an extra wireless mic just in case would be would be great. And having one like with dynamic gain so that you can you know you've got pristine audio is um that's that's clutch. Let's see. I love the wireless feature in color mixing. Um, I don't know what color mixing means. Maybe that was supposed to be something else. Up oh, low, low. Aloysius said. I heard you were doing a giveaway of that light in, in my hand. This light, this light right here. Ain't nobody said nothing about that. Got this one though. This is the RB9. This is the more pro version of this one. This is We Lights S05. It's in comparison. But no giveaways today. Maybe next time. Maybe uh, maybe if y'all go to the buy me a coffee link in my uh, description uh, or in the in the pinned comment, then uh, we can get some giveaways going on. Anyway, this has been fun, guys. 
yeah, Lo, yeah, Lo, you heard wrong. You heard wrong. But yeah, this has been fun. I'm gonna end the stream right here. Uh, look, if you liked the content, if you liked the this video, uh, go ahead and give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And look, we're gonna see you guys in the next video.